Hey, I'm Aubrey with Dev Central at F5, and I'm going to show you an example of how we would migrate internal applications from LTM in your data centers out to public cloud resources by using the F5 distributed cloud as an overlay software defined network. First of all, I want to log into my client here, this Ubuntu machine. From there, one important thing I want to show is my network settings. So if I look at the wired settings on my Ubuntu box, I've got 192.168.1.9, which is the internal listener for my F5 DNS, analogous to uh, an internal GTM or F5 DNS device out there today managing wide IPs for internal applications. As they migrate out to the cloud, we want to make sure that we can maintain scale for our internal DNS while still offering granular health checks for all services and endpoints. If I open up my virtual machine manager, I'm connected to my NUC in my internal network, which we can see I'm running my F5 Big IP there, as well as a distributed cloud mesh node. These two provide all of the networking for the demonstration here, with the Big IP doing global server load balancing and passing traffic over to the distributed cloud node. If we take a look now at our F5 DNS, we can see that my listener is, in fact, 1.9. So the only DNS my client is getting is from this particular listener, which is configured only for UDP. And as we can see, it's doing nothing fancy. We are snatting. That's about as fancy as it gets. And we can see here that my DNS profile is AKDNSProf, which if you've used GTM for a long time or F5 DNS these days, you know that the DNS profile is really just about the most important thing in your deployment. So let's take a look at my DNS profile to find out what services I'm utilizing. So we can see here in DNS features that I'm only using GSLB, DNS Express, and DNS Cache with a specified cache name. This allows me to operate this DNS box as a caching resolver and also it gives me global server load balancing capabilities. You will note that we are not using bind and we are only dropping unhandled query actions for this demo. So what delivers the traffic there? Well, ultimately the DNS request maps out to a wide IP. So my wide IP is defined here, the virtual services one and two. They are defined in the F5 distributed cloud, which we will take a look at in a moment. For now, if we look at one of these, we can see that it's attached to a pool. And that one pool is my distributed cloud pool, which we are round robining between two, um, two members inside the pool. If we take a look at this fairly standard pool, we have distributed cloud VIP 1 and distributed cloud VIP 2. 192.168.1.101 and 102. These are also round robined within the data center. The same configuration is also true for the second virtual service. Now, before we go into what the distributed cloud is doing for the front end, we should take a look at the back end of the application, which exists in four Kubernetes clusters in Azure. We have a two tiered application with one Kubernetes cluster per tier. And this application is distributed between east and west as denoted by an E or a W at the end of the AKS names. If we take a look here, we can see that in the east, if we look at our ingress points for our application, we find that my external IP address used to access any applications inside is 10.91.1.80. The 91 is what I've used to denote east so that I can easily see this 
in other areas of my demo. You would typically want the IP address to be same east to west, but in this case, I wanted it to be visible. If I go to one west, by the same token, we can see that the ingress is 10.92. In this way, I can tell when I'm east and west. Now that we've looked at the back end and its entry point, which if we're a network administrator or an F5 administrator in general, this is the data we need to know. Now that we've taken a look at the back end application and its ingress via Nginx Plus, we'll take a look at the distributed cloud and how it's set up. The first thing we want to find in the distributed cloud is how we drive traffic to those AKS clusters. So if I take a look at my load balancers and origin pools specifically, you can see I have three options here. One that round robins between east and west and one that is capable of pinning east or west. This is just to give you an idea. If we take a look at the round robin pool, we can see that I have identified east and west, denoted again by 91 and 92 in the second octet of my IP addressing. One thing to note here is that each of these are pinned essentially to an explicit site, which is a CE that exists in the same VNet as the ingress. If we take a look at these CEs very quickly under cloud and edge sites, we can see that I only have four distributed cloud nodes. My NUC, Azure West, and Azure East. I also have a UDF node that advertises the same VIP, but at the moment it's powered off. If I dig in here and take a look at nodes, master zero, we can see that my IP address is in fact 10.91.0.227. This matches up with what I've shown in Kubernetes. From there, we would want to take a look at the front end. If we go back to load balancers and look at the actual HTTP load balancers involved, we get back to my virtual service one and virtual service two, which are configured identically. You can see that they are both set up to be accessed by virtual service one dot product one dot and f5 demos dot com and virtual service two in the same subdomain. This allows either virtual IP address to accept either host name. If we manage the configuration, we can see that my domains are specified right at the top. Since there is no pool associated by default on this application, We've associated the pool via a route. This allows me more granular control with header manipulation. If we take a look at this particular route, you can see that I am specifying my origin pool, which is the load balanced origin pool, and I am matching on the expected inbound header, which matches up to the DNS defined in the F5 DNS box. We rewrite the backend header as the application expects a different header. In addition to this, we want to show our VIP advertisement. We already know that the origin pool is defined in Azure East and West. However, where our VIP is advertised is a completely different story. In a chassis or appliance world, we're used to having both of these load balancing elements in one machine, but here we can see that the load is distributed. Our VIP is being advertised on my NUC in the outside network, 
and also in my UDF site on the inside network of my UDF virtual CE. Now that we've seen how the VIP and origin pools are laid out, and we've seen the DNS, we can take a look at our applications. If I look at Virtual Service 1, we can see that it's an application that is designed to show the external IP address of my CE. And if I round robin load balance this, we can see that we have in fact changed regions. As we continue to click refresh, we continue to see that we have round robin action on our IP address, denoting global server load balancing. Next, if we check Virtual Service 2, we can see that dot .92, which denotes west, and as I round robin, I can see that I'm going back and forth as expected between 91 and 92. Again, geographical server load balancing with a round robin algorithm. If we take a look at the traffic flow of our application, now that we've run traffic against it, we can see a very clear relationship. As our NUC, again, these are the only three CEs that I have defined in the distributed cloud on this application. My NUC, as you can see, only has client side traffic, <laughs> albeit not very much. And if we take a look at the Azure nodes, <laughs> we can see that there is also a very low amount of server-side traffic. We are used to seeing client and server in the same machine, in an appliance or a chassis. This shows us how we can easily localize health checks and maximize DNS resolutions in an internal F5 architecture. If we tie this back to the beginning about DNS, I hope it becomes evident that all we need to do as existing network administrators to drive traffic to these sites is to establish a mesh of CE nodes and simply change your pool members to no longer reference the LTM VIPs that are associated with these WIPs. Thanks for listening in. I'm Aubrey with DevCentral. Have a great F5 day.